Hi, this is Kelly from 1, 2 Plus Me and You. And today I'm going to show you how to make a pillow for a tooth. Um, and this is for the Tooth Fairy. What you're going to need is some fusible web um, for your letters or letter, depending on what you're going to be doing. Originally I was thinking of doing just a giant A, which would be a lot easier to cut, but this is for a very special guy, a very uh, specific guy. Um, uh, I wanted to make sure that it was special, so I'm going to attempt to do these letters. Um, you are going to need a piece of fabric for the back of the pillow. Um, and I cut this 10 inches by 10 inches. And a piece that is for the front. This is 10 inches by 10 inches as well. Uh, you're going to need some ribbon. And the ribbon is going to be for, um, it's actually optional for the pillow. Um, this you can hang it on a door. Or you can hang it maybe on a bedpost or something. And that way it doesn't actually have to go underneath your son's um, head or daughters or whoever and that way you um, you won't have to worry about waking them up or the tooth fairy won't have to worry about waking them up in the middle of the night um, and this is five, uh, five eighths oops, um, by 15 feet um, I just got this at the dollar store believe it or not so this is just fine um, and we will be cutting it later just to get an idea of maybe how much you need and it's really going to differ b depending on and um, where you're going to be putting it. You may also want to cut two pieces and make kind of some straps uh, that you can tie if you've got maybe like a bunk bed and you can't slide it over the top of something. So that will come later. So if you've got five yards like I do here, that's fine. If you're going to be going out and buying it, a yard should be just enough. That's fine. Um, I've also gone ahead and I use my Cricut cutting machine and um, I use the Cricut Classic font. And with that, I actually used the Tall Ball Shadow button. Um, to make the letters and because the the front piece here is 10 by 10 I did a little bit of math to figure out how much um, or how big these letters should be to fit on a 10 by 10 so when you measure the uh, uppercase letter obviously it's going to be a little bit bigger um, than the lowercase so the lowercase I actually went ahead and made it um, an inch and a quarter but when you measure the capital letter it's actually about an inch and three quarters um, long this way and so if you add it all up um, it's it's not ten you actually have some space obviously because you want to have space in between your letters and you don't want it to take up the whole pillow um, at least I don't when you're going to be sewing this you're going to be sewing with quarter inch seam lines so you're going to be losing a half an inch that way as well. Um, you could always, if it's a really long name, like I said, I, I might just make a very big um, capital letter and put that in the middle. It's really up to you how you want to do that or even um, position it off to the side and then do your pocket um, over here, you know, whichever. Um, but I am going to be, this is just a stencil, this is um, paper. Um, I, I made this stencil so that way when I um, trace it onto here it will be a, a lot easier. I'm not very good at drawing so. I also went ahead and cut a piece of fabric that would hold this. So this is going to be determined by how big your stencil is. So once you cut your stencil then just put it on a piece of fabric and cut around it. Uh, and then you'll want to get your fusible webbing and you'll want to cut that the size of of this piece. Then I went ahead and also um, I cut a pocket so this is going to be the outside and this is going to be the inside of the pocket um, and I just I just kind of guessed with this but it's actually uh, about three and a quarter inches long and three and a quarter inches um, um, high this way 
and really you could just cut a box and then just fold it in half and once you fold it in half then just kind of curve it um, and but don't make it a point curve kind of curve to a, a, a flat end and then you've got yourself a pocket and again I just did a free drawing of a tooth um, which I'm going to cut out of white felt so the piece of white felt is missing from um, these supplies as well as your bag of fiber fill um, your batting um, that will go to stuff the pillow um, but once I get to that step with the pocket then I will um, trace this onto a piece of white felt cut it out and then you'll just sew that on here um, you'll want to sew that first but we'll go through those steps so these are the supplies that you will need um, again plus the p little piece of white felt you can use a scrap and plus the uh, fiber fill batting once you've got that then we're going to go ahead and start working on this first piece um, so you're not going to be doing anything with the back until you're all done so we're going to just be working on this but in order to work on that we need to go ahead and get the letters ready so um, you're going to take this fusible webbing and you're going to iron it on to this strip um, and you're just going to go ahead and follow the directions that are on here so the directions are on the box it's pretty straightforward and once you've gone through and have attached your, fu your fusible webbing to um, this piece then you're ready to move on now that I've attached my fusible webbing to my fabric, um, what I'm going to do next is just flip it over. And um, what you're going to take now is your stencils and you're going to attach it. So um, the fusible webbing is attached to the wrong side. So what I'm looking at is the right side of the fabric. And then I'm just going to flip over my stencil, so it's upside down. And then I'm going to trace around it with this pen. I'm going to do that with all of the letters. Now that I've traced backwards my letters, I am going to go ahead and cut them out. After I have now cut out all of my letters, um, I'm going to actually keep the webbing on the back for now. Um, I will be taking it off soon, but I'm not going to do that until I'm ready to iron it down. Next though, I will go ahead and take my stencil for my tooth and um, what I'm going to do is flip it over. So there's the back. Um, and I'm just going to trace it onto the felt and cut it out. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this down so it doesn't move and I'm going to sew it on here. Once that is done then I'm going to take the inside of the pocket and I am just going to put right sides together then I will pin it again and then what I'm going to do is just sew along the round part and of course a little bit in on each side. I'm going to leave some space here to flip it out and um, once I do that I will top stitch the top and then my pocket is ready to attach to the bigger piece. Now you've sewn your tooth onto your black or your front piece of the pocket um, and then again you attached um, both right sides together you've sewn all the way around and then you right side it out make sure to poke out the corners then you're just going to top stitch uh, the top closed and you have your pocket and you just want to position it now onto your front side um, and it's really up to you where you want it to go um, I'm thinking that I'll probably put it in the center 
but I don't know. So I might want to just play around with this a little bit. Again, my letters still have the webbing on the back. I haven't taken that off um, just because I'm not ready to iron it down yet. Um, so I can just, oops, I do know how to spell his name. Um, put this on, see what I think, move it around. Um, but then obviously you're, once you're fine with where everything is going to be, you'll want to pin down your pocket, um, backstitch, sew all the way around the edge, backstitch, and then your pocket is ready to go. Of course, do not sew the top part across because you want it to be a pocket, so um, don't do that. Um, once you've aligned your letters where you want them to go, then you're going to go ahead and peel off the back. Uh, peel off this back webbing um, and then once it's on there you're, again you're going to go through and follow your directions that you have on here and you're just going to again press the iron onto these and again when it says press that means just put it on the the fabric it doesn't mean move it around at all you're just almost laying it flat and counting however seconds how many seconds it tells you to count and then lift it up very gently so hopefully you're doing that okay so once you've figured out where you want it to be and you've sewn on your pocket then you should be at um, ironing on all of your letters once you do that then we're ready for the last few steps now as you can see the applique has been ironed on and the pocket is attached. Now what you'll want to do is you'll want to grab your ribbon and again um, it will all depend on where you're going to be hanging this is how much ribbon you need. So next you'll want to either cut one long strip or two small strips and even if you cut the two small strips you can still tie it and hang it on a door. Um, which I think is what I'm going to be doing is cutting the two small strips um, to tie just because I'm not quite sure where we're going to be putting this pillow that will give us a little bit of flexibility um, and allowing us to be able to tie it. I went ahead and now cut two strips of the ribbon and they are equal in length and they're both 10 inches long and I'm going to now um, put them on top of my um, front piece. And what I'm going to just do is measure about two and a half inches from each side. And I'm just going to place the ribbon right there. So the middle part of the ribbon will be at two and a half. And then again, I'll measure on this side, two and a half. And then I'll put that one there. Um, next, you're going to be taking the back piece and you want to have right sides right sides together so put that on top and then you're going to pin all the way around um, when you are pinning this top here you want to make sure that the um, pin goes through the back material and then goes through the ribbon so it keeps the ribbon in place and it won't slide around when you get all the way down to the bottom you don't want to sew this part of the ribbon because you want it to uh, be used to tie you may want to just put a pin here so um, you'll pin that up so it doesn't get caught here in the bottom and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second So here's what I meant with um, putting the sides together so um, I have the pin go through the back then through the ribbon and I went ahead and just had my ribbon stick out a little bit. Um, that way you can easily see where it's supposed to go. You can see that it's straight and then when you get down here to the bottom um, you shouldn't sew over it but you know to be on the safe side again you can just fold it, put a pin here and then um, do the same to the other side and then cover that up and then continue all the way around with your pins. 
Again, here's my top. Um, I have the pins in. I didn't really pin the bottom because this is where I'm going to turn it um, right side out and then obviously where I'm going to be putting in my, um, my fiber fill. So I'm going to start down here a little bit um, in and then I'm going to sew all the way around. I might um, do a double stitch here like back stitch and then go over it again just to be on the safe side because you never know who's going to be tugging on it or whatever. And then I'm going to go all the way down and then I'm just going to go a little bit in. So I have these pins kind of guarding where I'm going to start and where I'm going to stop. Um, and then of course I'm going to back stitch again. Once I have completed that, I'm going to go through and then just trim my edges very lightly and make sure that I don't um, cut what I just um, put in with the thread. Um, and that'll make it a little bit sharper when I'm pushing out those corners. Um, so that's the next step. Here is what your pillow looks like um, before it becomes an actual pillow. Here you have your um, ribbons hanging out and what you might want to do next is just fold the ribbon end under and then just go ahead and sew that through. Um, that will uh, help it from fraying. Um, if it gets stuck on something, Velcro is a is a a big demon in the ribbon world that will just unravel that with within seconds. So um, you want to go ahead and and take care of those ends. You could um, now grab your fiber fill, and you're actually just going to go ahead and stuff this pillow um, until it is full. Um, you can stuff it as full as you want. Um, it's not really a pillow that anyone's going to be laying on, so it doesn't have to be firm and comfortable. It just has to be pillowy. So um, that's your next step. Well, and I've gone ahead and filled it as full as I feel it needs to be. And the very bottom is where I had the opening, and I went ahead and pinned that. And um, Normally what you'll hear people say is that you should just go ahead and hand stitch the, the end of the pillow. I don't have enough patience for that. So I just smush it and I will put this through my machine and I will top stitch it, back stitch, top stitch, and back stitch on the end. Um, and then you're done. Again, um, you're going to take this and um, you can tie it in a nice little bow and hang it on the door um, or hang it on the bedpost or what have you. Um, wherever it is that that you want to um, hang it for the tooth fairy to find. Um, you could even just set it off to the side. Um, you don't even need to use these. It's really up to you. Um, and you're ready for the tooth fairy.